thank you very much, uh, Honorable Tenderbit, for, for your time. Uh, we understand that uh, there was a Supreme Court uh, judgment, uh, uh, maybe we, which we can say that uh, might affect you, your, your party. Uh, we don't know the context which are, which are the Supreme Court judgment. Can you just walk us through what is really happening? What did the court say? Well, on the 31st of March 2020, there was indeed a, a Supreme Court judgment uh, concerning a political party known as the MDCT that directed uh, Tokuzani Kupe to call for a Congress of that party uh, within three months from the date of that judgment, in other words, from the 31st of uh, March 2020. And in the event of EFA, he directed for that uh, Congress. Now, as we keep on uh, saying, uh, we are MDC Alliance. We participated in the election of July 30, 2018 as MDC Alliance. Our leader is Advocate Nelson Chamisa. The MDC Alliance was a coalition, a loose coalition of seven political parties. In terms of the Electoral Act, any organization or a board that seeks to participate in an election must register as a body. The MDC Alliance was registered in terms of the Electoral Act at the Zimbabwe Election Commission. When you saw register, you must identify your candidates, which we did. You must identify your presidential candidate, which we did. You must register your party symbol, which we did. You must register your party logo, which we did. You must register your party name, which we did. Simultaneously, there was another political party over and above the 50 or so political parties who participated in that election. There was another political party known as the MDCT, led by Tokozani Kupi which also registered to contest in that election with its own symbol, with its own logo. These two parties contested with others in the 2018 election. The MDC Alliance, led by advocate Nelson Chamisa, 120 seats, and advocate Nelson Chamisa himself scored over 2.6 million uh, votes. Uh, uh, Tokozani Kupe had uh, 46,000 people that voted for her. She got at least two seats in parliament. So you now have essentially uh, four political parties that are represented in parliament. You've got ZANU PF, you've got the MDC Alliance, you've got the MDC T. And you have got one seat, one seat, uh, quick question round that went to uh, 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 Zimbabwe, a uh, party known as uh, Zimbabwe First. Uh, so those are the four political parties in the in the in the uh, in parliament. After the election, the MDC Alliance transited, evolved, transformed from a coalition of different political parties into one entity. It went through a process of integration where all these parties were integrated to the MDC Alliance. The MDC Alliance then went to a congress between the 24th and the 28th of May 2019 at Guerrero and elected its own leadership that comprised the following Advocate Nelson Chamisa elected president uncontested uh, uh, Mrs. Lynette Kareni Kore vice president 
Professor Walsh Menube, Vice President. Tendai Biti, Vice President. Tabita Kumalo, National Chairperson. Job Scala, Deputy National Chairperson. David Coltart, Treasurer General. Charlton Wende, Secretary General. That was the leadership that was elected in uh, 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 in a way. So, as far as we are concerned, number one, we can be affected by a judgment in a case in which we, as the MDC Alliance, were neither an appellant, applicant, or a respondent, or a defendant. We were not there. We were not there. So we can't be affected by that judgment. Two, this judgment can't conflict the MDCT with the MDC alliance. The two are not uh, the same. Three, this judgment can't pretend, can't pretend that there was no Congress in 2019. That there was also another Congress in 2018 the Congress of the MDCT, which elected Tokozani Kupe as president, deputized by Obed Gutu, with the one Mao as secretary general, and other comrades and compatriots as members of that political party. So you can't affect the rights of Mao, for instance, to be secretary general. Why are you saying Douglas Motore is the secretary general of the MDCT? It's Mao. Mao, wherever he's sitting, must be very angry. A secretary general uh, you know you know you know right now so the judgment can be disalive to the april 2018 congress of the mdct the judgment can be disalive to you are in fact democracy at play we had nomination processes we had beauty contest across the entirety of the country in full view of the of the of the media you can't con you pretend that that is happening but there's another little hurdle there's another legal adult. The basis of the judgment was that Mr. Changirai should not have appointed two vice presidents. That was one finding. Number two, the judgment said you, Mrs. Kupe, must hold a Congress, an interim Congress, to fill in the time period between the time of Mr. Changirai's death and the time that you go to your next Congress. But here is the fallacy. The term of office of Mr. Changirai as president of the MDC expired in November of 2019 because the last MDC Congress was held in October of 2014. It also means that the term of office of Tokozani Kupe in her capacity as vice president of the MDC also expired. The term of office of Douglas Montora as the secretary general who was elected at the 2014 October Congress has also expired. So how do you have a judgment that implicitly extends the term of offices that have expired? So in short, we have a brutal fulfillment. We have a dog's breakfast, but as far as the MDC Alliance is concerned, we have our leader, Advocate Nelson Chamisa, and the leadership that was elected in Gweru between the 24th of May and the 28th of May. And our next Congress is in May of 2024. Political issues are not determined in courts of law. I was the lawyer, a standard bit, who represented Kudakwashe Basket when he was expelled from ZANU PF in early 2015. And on behalf of Kudakwashe Basket, I went to the High Court of Zimbabwe. And all the way to the Constitutional Court, arguing that Kudakwashe Baskiti had been expelled from ZANU PF without due process, without a disciplinary hearing having a set. 
the same court, the constitutional court told me, could approach a basket, told me that you had a duty and an obligation to exhaust the domestic remedies, number one. Go and resolve your problems at the party. Number two, and nobody's talking about this. The court said political parties are voluntary associations whose right to exist is protected by the right to freedom of association codified in section 58 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe which recognize the right of individuals to participate in politics codified in and protected by Section 67 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. So if there's a disagreement in a political party, my brothers and sisters, that the people of Zimbabwe are with the MDC Alliance, the people of Zimbabwe are with Advocate Nelson uh, Chamisa, and that is fact. Mm. Uh... Coming, coming back to the issue that uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa won uh, with at least uh, 2.6 million votes. Uh, yesterday, uh, and for former MDCT uh, Vice President uh, Obed could say that uh, people who voted for Advocate Nelson Chamisa uh, did so because they had an emotional attachment with the late uh, President Sangre. What's your take on that one? That's a self-defeating argument. Puesto Kuzanukupe participated who was Mr. Changirai's deputy it was about emotional attachment to Mr. Changirai then Tokozani Kupe should have gotten a, a, a busload of votes but she didn't get, she got nothing Also, uh, according to, to the MDCT uh, Vice President he said that uh, he wants uh, financial, some money which he got from the Financial Act uh, then they say the money they get from the financial aid. What's, what's your take on that one? He, he's accusing your party uh, for abusing a man from the financial aid. You know, the struggle for liberating our people cannot be commodified. It's not a commodity. It's not a packet of roller mill you buy from pick and pay a supermarket. If our colleagues, Mr. Monzora, Mr. Komichi, think this is about money, they, they can get whatever cent that they want. We will remain with the people. It's, the struggle is not a commodity. Uh, also, at the, at the 2019 Congress in Guerrero, uh, after the elections, Honorable uh, Komichi said that he was committed to the struggle. And he was, I'm quoting him. I'm not going to sell out. I'm committed to the struggle. What went wrong after 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 the the Guel Congress between your party and him? It 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 it's, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. Uh, the person who convened the Guel Congress was in fact Mr. Douglas Monzor, who participated. In that Congress, firstly as a presidential candidate, but when it became clear that it was going to be Armageddon, he then switched and thought he would try his luck uh, as Secretary General. But of course, people thought him a lesson. Uh, Mr. Komichi was in fact Vice President at the time. He participated and he lost. The sad thing about this whole construct is that this is ZANU PF at play. This is the Junda at uh, play. Which is why some of us have no kind words for these comrades because they're just being pawns of the regime. I was in court when the judgment was read out at 3 p.m. on the 31st of March 2019. I was in court for a different court case, the constitutional judgment in the matter of uh, Innocent Gonese and another uh, versus uh, 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 the, the Speaker of Parliament and others to do with the legality of constitutional amendment number one. As a lawyer for Innocent Gonese, I didn't go with the written speech because I didn't know whether I was going to lose or win. But as I said in court, after the two judgments have been handed down, some lawyers who were outside came to say, VP beat, 
Mr. Komichi is reading a speech to celebrate the MDC judgment. Now, I've been a lawyer for a long time. How did Mr. Komichi know that there was going to be a positive outcome in that judgment? And why, if I might ask, was statutory instrument 83 of 2020 breached? Because justice and judges and law firms are not an essential service. Why were we called to break COVID? There was nothing urgent in both judgments. Three, look at the way in which the police surrounded Harvest House. I tried to have a press conference. I went to Harvest House. You guys were there. Harvest House was blocked. Look at the enthusiasm, the exuberance of street media. Look at the exuberance of the Varakashi on social media celebrating my brother, Mr. Komichi, my brother, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Monzora. So, you know, we have walked with this uh, path before. There will always be sellouts in our struggle. They, in, in any struggle, Mr. Moise Chombe sold out Patrice Lumumba. Mr. Maurice Nyat sold the struggle in Chimoyo and Nyadzonia in 1976 and 1977 in Mozambique. So this is not a surprise at all. Uh, last uh, but not least, uh, today we woke up to the news that Harvest House has been logged uh, by Honorable Douglas Monzora. Is it true? It's not correct. We're in full control uh, of Harvest House, but I have no doubt that in the next few days you are going to see uh, through, the, through the police and the military and the CIO Monzora try to take uh, you know, Harvest House. You're also going to see Monzora try to fire you know, our MDC MPs. You're also going to see Monzora try and get the resources due to the MDC Alliance in terms of the Political Parties Finance Act. You know, we, we, we don't give a damn. We don't give a damn. We are MDC Alliance. We'll stand with the people. Does he have power to fire MDC no, MPs? He, he doesn't have a power. He doesn't have a power at all. The MDC Alliance can only act through those officials that were elected at the Guiru Congress. So neither Mrs. Kupe can do anything affecting MDC Alliance. She was not in Guiru. Mr. Manzora was in Guiru, but he lost Dismar. Mr. Morgan Komichi was in Guiru. He lost Dismar in the blood pressure, hypertension, which he has not recovered from. He is not an office bearer of the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance led by advocate Nelson Chamis. Okay, uh, the two are senators. What is, their, what is their fate? Are you going to recall them from Senate or anything? Is NBC Alliance? Uh, we have a constitution, we have a constitution that says that uh, if a person, if a member belongs to another party, he automatically ceases to to belong to uh, to you know to our party, Mr. Komich and Mr. Monzora have clearly uh, shown that they belong to to the MDCT led by Dr. Tokozani Kupe. Uh, Mr. Komich's statement was very clear. So so there's been due process. Uh, they've self-expressed, self-expelled uh, themselves from our of, of, from our movement. As of what will happen with their fate in the Parliament. Uh, you know, I can't speak on behalf of our of our of our of our party. Uh, the party will make its uh, decisions. But what I can confirm as as a lawyer uh, and as someone who knows the constitution of the MDC Alliance is that if you join another political party, you self expel. And Douglas Monzora and uh, <clears throat> Morgan Komicho have self expelled themselves from the MDC Alliance. After the Supreme Court uh, ruling. Have you ever tried to get rid of um, either of the two, Mr. Komich or, or Mr. Monzora, to make the way forward? Uh, I personally, I have not uh, done anything, and I have no intention of uh, of, of 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 doing that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I really don't know what the way forward is. <laughs> they, no one chased them away from the MDC alliance except themselves. So if someone decides to exercise his right to freedom of dissociation from us, we can't we can force him. That's, that's why it's democracy. We're a voluntary association. We're a voluntary association, which is why I said at the beginning, those who want to join Mr. Kupe, uh, uh, Mrs. Kovici, Thank you very much, Honorable Vita.